So here we are on podcast three. Time goes quick, Richard, when you're having fun, eh? And you think, well, how have we got here? Really? Time's gone faster. It's going yeah. faster, Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> We're on podcast three, and um, today we've been talking about this because we don't usually plan these podcasts, but we have today, haven't we? A little bit, anyway. Mm-hmm. And and what we want to talk about is um, why business owners are a little bit reluctant to build their businesses to a a big size. We have a theory of why most businesses don't um, grow and and the system that most businesses use is a system again we're, we're doing some shapes on the board <laughs> now I'd just like to bring to your attention how good that shape is now that is a good shape is that not a good shape look at that very nicely done Chris. well done now what that is is that's the business and at the top of the business, you do tend to have the salon owner. There's the salon owner. And if we took, for instance, a, a business like our own, a salon, you have within the business... Employees. Employees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven employees. Now, this person at the top is the salon owner. But they tend to work on the tools, don't they? That's one of the things that we tend to say. So they tend to have to cut air. Now this person at the top is sort of, their theory and system, what they're using is, I'm the leader, follow me. And so the business tends to go in this direction. This person at the top, it tends to, this person will do the most hours, put the most effort in, probably charge the most, take the most money, retail the most, does the most of everything, because that's the salon owner. And then you have all the people below them. Now the problem with this system is that it cannot grow very much to the point where it will only grow to the time that this person starts to get tired, because it's the hardest way to run a business, where you're working on the tools And you're having to manage these people as well. You're having to run the business, but you're doing all the work on the front as well. And what happens is that there's there's an invisible glass ceiling on top of the rest of the team. And that's why these people at the top find it very hard, which we talked about last podcast, is to motivate them. Because they're on the tools. They're so busy having to take so much money and and trying to put all the hours in to make this business work, they haven't got the time where they should be spending with the rest of the team. And so these can't see past the salon owner. So where at one point the salon owner was the asset of the company, it was because of the, the business being in the position they are, all of a sudden the person in the front is now becoming the, cho- the chokehold? Absolutely, a bit of a liability. Mm-hmm. Because these people are not motivated because they can't see past that person. Now, you see this on a lot of price lists where this person charges the most and sometimes they even put their name on. So you might have graduate stylist, stylist, senior stylist, and then the name of the, the salon owner. And, you know, that... that If I was working there, you would stop really pushing yourself forward because nobody can get past the name of the salon owner. So that's why it's very difficult to motivate them. So the question is, how do you grow a business like this using this system? Well, I don't think you can. So what we suggest is that you turn the system around on its head and we suggest Again, a lovely triangle there. We suggest you run the business from the back. This 
business is all about your team. Your team are the most important people within the business. They're far more important than the clients. The clients come after the team because it's the team who are going to look after the clients. Mm -hmm. You can get more clients if you've got a good team, mm. but you can't always get good people. And it takes a long time and a lot of effort and searching and training to get the right people. So here, the person is now leading from the back. Still going in that direction, but it's about these people. And you imagine this, instead of the salon owner charging the highest price, you imagine having four people charging that, and then three people below them charging a little bit more, far more than what the, the, the salon owner could charge. It's the salon owner who can set the prices because now they've got time to work on the prices. It's the salon owner who can work on the wage structure because they've got time to work on the wage structure. Here, all they've got to do is work on the tools. Here, now you're starting to become a business person. Well, at the top, you're a, you've got a job. Yes. Here, you're starting to make a business. Mm. And this is why, in our opinion, this business and this system down here... could grow as big as you want. You can grow it as big as you want. The problems in this business are halved because you've got time to deal with them. This is the hardest way to run a business. And that's why most people get to this and think, the last thing I want to do is start employing more people because all I can imagine is harder work and negative reasons. Here, you start to get the best results from these people. And you've got the, you've got the time to do it. Now, let me just say though, this journey from leading from the front to leading to the back is not a short term thing. You can't do that in six weeks. In fact, in my business, and I've been doing it for over 30 odd years, I still don't feel as if I've got there yet fully. I, I feel as if you got to that stage in my business, it means that I could leave the salon for 12 months come back and find it in a better position than what I left it with. Mm -hmm. That's the true reflection of leading from the back. And it can be 10, 15, 20 years in the journey from leading from the front to the back. And I've got to tell you, and we both agree with this, is that it's the journey that is so fantastic. It's not the destination. It's not the destination, because I don't think you ever get there is the truth. There's always better, there's always more that you can do. It, it, once you get to here, it means that you've stopped growing and it isn't in the nature of the person once they get to here. You can't stop growing. And so you might redesign and change direction, but it, it's a complete journey through your whole career of business. But this is the reason why we believe that most businesses don't grow because all the thoughts they have are negative about their vision, which is what we spoke about before. The vision of their business here. Or it's ego driven. Or, or ego driven, yeah. Mm. But here, that is so much more enjoyable, but not just for this person. You imagine that you're in this team, and now you've got in here a structure of promotion, these people want to get to the next level and they're, they're charging good prices so that they're, they're charging the right price. So many people don't know how to set their prices do they? And that they tend to look down the high street and around the surrounding area and think um, well how much should we charge? Well we'll go one pound lower than the salon down the road that will put them out of business, that will sort them out and that's our price but it don't work like that. All the prices are, are sorted out by the figures and there's a certain um, way of doing that. But you can see here, you've got what we talked about motivation, you've got that career path where people can, 
they want to get to the top. And so if these, these people at the top were charging £60, and these people down there was charged £54, let's say, and, and these people down there were charging £47 or something, you can see every time they get promoted as stylist, they've got the ability to take more money. And once you've got the ability to take more money, you've got the ability to... Your grow. wages increase and grow. And you can grow, yeah. Mm -hmm. The more money you can take, the more money you, you receive, and you've got a structure of how to get promoted. The difficulty with this, and one of the other main things with this particular model, is that it's smaller group, and so you're working alongside these people. So, are you going to handle or manage a situation for example, she comes in late, it's only five minutes, and I worked late last night. Would you address it with her if you've got to work alongside her or him all day long? Might, might not. And you leave it, the next day it's 10 minutes, the next day it's 15 minutes, and then you've created a problem, but you don't want really to get rid of her. And there's only a few anyway. If she gets upset, she might leave, and then if she doesn't. And you, the whole so model cool. is based on emotion fear of emotion of the people leaving or being upset or being in a mood or being in a strop over here where you just manage behaviour. It's the system structures that allow you to grow that. Because within that there are, there are systems, aren't there? So stay where you are. Can I just point out for the people watching that Richard's on a step here. <laughs> <laughs> so we can sit there now. It's a big step. We've never stood up both staying at, at the same time. <laughs> I didn't expect him to stand up while I was standing up then. <laughs> but you can see that it's so simple to see. You can understand what it is that needs to change. Now the question I would be, if I was watching this, I would be able to identify that most of these people, is it the right word to say, are all knackered. They're knackered because they're working themselves into the ground. Or stressed. Stressed, tired, worn out. They've got the return on their their time and investment into their business is not rewarded well. And with all the changes of laws, which are employing people becomes harder and more difficult and more costly, there's more reasons for not running a business and not growing the business. Or making them self-employed. And so now that we're finding is that most salons, uh, especially salons that are, are seven to ten, mm. seven to ten stylist salons uh, are struggling possibly more than the smaller salons. Well, I, think I think there's yeah, five to seven, and then once you get the seven to ten, it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, seven to, seven to ten, but it's the five to seven yeah. that are, are struggling yeah. the most. But the ones smaller than that, are doing okay. And so there's a lot of people thinking, you've got to be small. But I believe, and I think Richard does as well, is that it's okay for the, the short term. The reason why some of these are struggling is because they haven't got enough business knowledge at a time when you need it. Well, it's a, I mean, the, the thing with that is, and you have to define it, if, if you're, if you're that size or smaller, then it's a lifestyle business. I mean, you can never get to, to stand up again. Go on. <laughs> Is you can never get to the point where, where, where's the exit? You know, what's the end game with it? So you're always gonna to have to put stands behind the chair and, and do clients and work alongside people. Yeah. So, I mean, here, you, it's, it's, it's economies of scale, isn't it? Um, and so here, you're doing all the jobs, things, I mean, not just the, the cutting, colouring, if it's in, in our industry, but being on the tools, if you like. Here, it's, it's getting to a point where this is scalable and gives you revenue to be able to outsource some of the things that you would do here. Yeah. It could be laundry, it could be, I don't know, uh, bookkeeping, it could be training, it could be whatever it is, and you get a chance at this point. This is where, it's not just about the kind of, the role that you have here, it's very much about having been able to afford to have people do some of the share some of the responsibilities and also here because these people are valued and they feel part of something they'll take some of that pressure off you here nothing in it for me why should i do it that's your job that's the kind of mindset if she leaves 
oh, well, I'm a bit more valuable now because now they need me more. I want a pay increase. I want to change my hours. I don't want to work Saturday anymore. Whereas here, I'm, I'm earning good money. It's important that we keep this model. So yeah, I'll, I'll do the stock and I'll do some training mm -hmm. and I'll do something else. And suddenly this has a different dynamic to this. You, you have a whole different mindset on it. You, you rationalize things a lot better. And I think that's the difference from here. So that's sort of seven, this area through here. This gives you freedom. You're at seven to 10 stylists, which we spoke about on yeah. previous podcasts. <clears throat> yeah, you could lose one or two, and it wouldn't, wouldn't fundamentally affect the business. You, you, you'd move on. But if you've got two to three, and two get pregnant, then you're back on your own. And that's the fear thing. Even if you're enjoying it in the moment, life happens with people. And so even if you've got a really good dynamic and good people, young people, the chances are someone will get pregnant, people want to travel, people move house, husbands get jobs. People move, you're always vulnerable because you can go from three to two, from four to two, four to three. It's, and then you've got this precarious kind of change in dynamic. Whereas here, it's, it's scalable. People, clients can move between levels. There's, op there's opportunity for people. It's, a, it's, it's just a different animal, to be honest. And all that's missing between the, from going, because I was here, and I'd agree, I'm not there yet, but that journey's been probably 15 years, mm. maybe longer too. And it's a journey really of, you know, having to go back in at certain times and getting down to here and it's, life's a bit easier now than it was when I was, when I was here, it, but the job's different. But that doesn't mean to say, which sometimes people think, this means I can retire or sit and do work part-time. You, you, you get a little more flexibility, but you've still got to look after these people. Mm. And sometimes people forget It's a that. different job, isn't it? It's a different it? job, yeah. It's a different job, and, and I always say it's an overnight success 30 years in the making. Yeah. Because it doesn't happen overnight. Mm. But it sometimes a, appears to be, well, you, you, you know, you, you've done all right, you know. It's as if it's happened overnight, but it isn't. It takes a but long time. But it's effective the industry. So, I mean, that's not been a... That's not a judgmental thing on the industry. You look at the industry and look at, like I said, most businesses, and you think, well, they, they are they are small. I mean, they just are. We look, you look at the statistics. I mean, I've, I've looked at it recently, and something like fifty nine percent of businesses in the UK are just sole traders or self employed. Fifty nine percent. Yeah. And only and only forty five percent of businesses are registered for VAT or or pay as you were. Is that and that's, not, that's not just businesses? No, that's, that's the whole of the country, 45%. So that means 45% of the companies are the ones paying all the money and all the employees. It's, it just shows you how the system is, is, it, you know, isn't really working mm. and why they're all a little bit smaller. And our industry is obviously exactly the same because I've, I've learned to be a great hairdresser, I'm busy and I don't want to carry on doing that. That doesn't mean to say that you, if you're here and you're creatively driven, but it's all about coming off the tools and not working on the salon floor. You can still get some balance, but I think every business has to start with, a, with an exit strategy, even if you don't ever take it up, because you've got to have something, you've got to grow something to at least give you the options to, to take a step back or, or you know, do something different in the future, just for variety. If you were in a new salon mm -hmm. or you were just starting out, how do you create that mindset from the start? It's vision. It goes back to, well, now I've opened it, what's, where's my examples of other businesses that I want to model? You know, that's the way I kind of look at it. So, well, if there's other businesses out there, I want to model a certain business to get to a certain size because that's the way I kind of looked at it. Yeah. I worked and trained at a very large salon, so that was my goal, just to get back to being in, back into that kind of environment. So I knew it was possible. It's slightly different, I suppose, if you've been brought up in a, in a smaller salon and you open a salon. And you're surrounded and by, you're surrounded sal by salons smaller and salons. businesses that are so small. But the only way to get out of that is to sort of, is to go and spend time with people who have got, it's education, you have to go out and, 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 and sort of look at it and say, if they listen today and say, well, you're, that's very nice and that sounds very good and mm -hmm. I see what that, I can see the, the benefits of that. What's the first step? That's the question I would be asking. What's my first steps? And the first steps is you need to know how, you, you need to know why you're in that size first and all. You have to recognize that first, and, you know, where are you today? And the next bit is how do I get to this point? And what, you know, what are the key pieces of information I need to know? And that comes down to education. Because if you're in this model, 
That means you were probably a busy stylist, you worked in a busy salon, I'll open a salon, I'm now a busy stylist working in my own salon, but I've still got the same job, except my name's over the door, it's my business. But I employ different people, and I've, I'm gonna use the same model that I'm using for myself. And so basically, I've just opened a business, given myself a job, and I've got two other people working who've got a job. And so it's not really a proper business. But the business, this is a business owner, and, a, and a, because getting to this stage means that you have to have systems and structures. And if you're gonna to start to take some time back, then the first things you're doing is spending time with these people. But education, I know we, it's very easy to say that because we run education, but what we're saying is edu education is a general term, isn't it? Education, educated in what? And the education is, in, in, is by people who have made that journey from there to there. In other words, what's the shortest route to success? And the shortest route to success is to find out all the mistakes they made and avoid them. That's the shortest route. You'll still make them and there'll still be challenges here. And this isn't necessarily easier. It's different, but it's not necessarily easier. Um, That's not me. <laughs> I'm thinking, that could be an appointment. <laughs> I'm still going back there every time. <laughs> Richard's working in a salon. But it's, this is what I'm saying. There's a different skill set here and you don't have it here. You have to learn it, and you have to learn it from people who already know how to do it, and have done it, and will 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 say, do this, don't do that, don't do something else. That works really well, but don't do that. And it's up to you then to decide whether you trust the the advice or not. But you trust it from somebody who says, I've got. A, let me show you, and then they come in and you show them what what you do and how you've done it. So, at what point do you suggest people do? go down the education route, sure. when they feel like they're at their maximum capacity in terms of... At the beginning. Right. The earlier, the better. Yeah. I mean, ideally, if you, this is for the country, to be fair, but ideally, you want the same model as Germany. In other words, to open a business in Germany, you have to have done the business course, mm -hmm. because they want responsible business owners. So they're sort of saying, let's educate you first on what you need to do as a business, and then you can open your business. Mm -hmm. Because then you don't make the same mistakes to start off with. Whereas here, you go, well, I'll be the business and we'll help with that. And then they get into the business and then they start making all the mistakes. You think, well, and then you get your backtracking. The problem is, is that here, you don't have the economies of scale in terms of the finances. And they look at education, they go, it looks expensive. I need time out of the salon. So why would I give that time out? And why would I spend that money? And some people never find it, never make that decision. So they always stay small. And we'll spend our whole career, 20, 30 years or whatever, in that model. But that is such a stressful model. Whereas as opposed to getting to this point, and then it's a different type of um, pressure and different type of stress. It's still there to a certain degree, because if you're, if you're a business owner, then you, you, there's no certainty in that. But there's no certainty in anything nowadays anyway. So the job for life, find an environment, we're dealing with uncertainty. But if you're a business owner, and even if you're self-employed, you're dealing with uncertainty. The uncertainty here is a different uncertainty to here. Here is, I'm fearful of losing people. I'm, I'm fearful of the rent going up. I'm fearful of the stock going up. Uh, and you can, and we do a lot of sound learners of that size. And it's honestly, it's, it's, it's a shame because you think you just need to make a few changes, do a few different things, and you'll get to that point. It's harder, it's more challenging now than it was because recruitment's harder. And as Chris said, these people coming in from the outside, whether they're trainees or they're stylists now, there's less of them. And because there is less of them, they have more choice, but they'll always choose this model first. They might go to that model, I've been offered 20 quid more, the split's different, but here you can, you can show them the results. And there's people here with the results to, to be able to sort of say, right, this person earns that, this is how it works, it's gonna take this amount of time, this is, and, you can, and you've got a model. And that's up to them whether they wanna work in that or not. And last all is to be fair, it's harder to work in this model. Here, relax, I can have my phone on me. I'm gonna pop out and get it. They do those sorts of things. It's a very, it's a much more social type environment with that. Mm. That's more, most of the time, has to be more professional because of the nature of the structure of it. it they get, if you wanna grow, you have to have systems and structures. It's just as simple as, any, as that. Here, there's, there'll be systems and structures, but they'll be very fluid, you know, adaptable to, They'll make it, you know, they'll, they'll change something to suit the, the stylish rather than suit the business, in my experience.
Mm, you've been back. So this one is your product, and we can't. We've got to have a class, a good product. Um, the the second circle is your business. Skills. Skills and knowledge. Mm. The strange thing about this one is that the business skills and knowledge is for everybody within the salon. It isn't just for the salon owner. Now some people, they don't want to talk about business to their team because there are some secrets, their wage structures may be different. And uh, as we look into, into, into this sort of system is that these smaller salons have more managers than these. Here we have our product, here we have our business skills, and then the, the third circle is the delivery of the product, and we call it our client's journey. Everybody has to understand that how we deliver the, our product to our clients is so important, it has to be consistent. We like to call it our consistent client's journey. Everybody has to do the same thing. You lose more clients on the second and third visit than you do on the first, because the first visit, you give them, you pull out all the red carpet and you, oh, we've got a new client and they get more. Party poppers. They get more time, they get this, that, you know, it's a new client and uh, the second time, it's not as good as the first time. But I'll give, them a, I'll give them another chance. And then the third time, it's just inconsistent. Mm. And so in the end, they look somewhere else. Very important, the client's journey. And, and so if you, the, the, these look simple, but there are a, a lot of information here mm. within each circle. But at least now we can focus on mm. each circle. And it gives us a structure and a system of how to educate ourselves. And with the triangles, a bit messy there, but with the triangles, you can see that this here, we can work on these. Here, we can't because we haven't got time. And it's as simple as that really. It all boils down to time. You haven't got time to do anything. Here, you have And if a business isn't growing, yeah. Or a stylist isn't growing, and you know that from the numbers, it's only it's either one of those or both. So it's a simple thing to go back and, and look at that. Either their skills aren't good enough, or the delivery of the product isn't good enough. And the reason you know is because the numbers tell you. Yeah. It's a very simple model. I mean, it's simple in terms of understanding it. As Chris said, this is like a big onion. Understanding which elements, how to how to train it, how to teach it, how you put together the system how you create, create that client's journey, that's a whole different thing. That's not a day's education, Chris, isn't it? Well, I, I said today, because we were talking to somebody today, a, a business owner, and I said, I still get excited about this, because I think, I, I, I think it's so wonderful that we, we've, we've learned something, introduced it, and actually it works. And our salons are evident of that. The, the, the big triangle leading from the back actually does work and it, yeah, I mean, it gives does. everybody the lifestyle that they want in the end. It takes, and it takes a lot of the pressure It on. gives a choice yeah. to people. It's less stressful. Yeah. So um, that's our podcast today. Um, thank you very much, Richard. There's a lot there to think about, isn't there? Um, from the point of fact that Although we've shortened it, I think there's a lot to think about and um, we'll come back with the, the next podcast uh, on uh, sort of um, the next bit that comes out of this. Well, they're just looking at it in slightly more depth. Yeah. So anybody who's got anything to, any questions, um, if you'd like to subscribe, if you'd like to like. Yeah. Comment. <laughs> Comment. <laughs> Um, but any anything that um, we want to get people the would like don't to, we? Uh, us to focus on in our podcast, please and if feel you've free. Listen, and you thought I'm at the top triangle, yeah. which is where I don't want to be. I want to be at the bottom triangle. I will put 
the contact details for Winning Ways Education Absolutely. at the end of the video for you yep. to get in touch with Richard and Chris. And the first step, to get anywhere, you've got to take a first step. And that could be your first step. But it, it takes courage um, because it's not easy to, to take that first step. Mm -hmm. But once you do, you think, thank God I did that. Because it's... It, it, we take action, and if it's not if it's not creating some sort of anxiety in you, it's not a big enough step. Yeah, that's as simple yeah. as that. If you really want to make progress, change your results, do something different, it has to kind of get you in a little bit there in your solar plexus. Otherwise, it's you tweaking. You have to take bold steps to get to to be successful. Requires courage, and it takes bold steps to to, to start that journey. It's comfortable, as hard as it can be running a salon from the, from the front, it's what you know, so it's, it's, it's busy and it's stressful and it's tiring, but it's, but it's comfortable, it's what you know. It's, it's hard to take them to, to start moving to something else, but if you want it and you want a different life, then it's the only way to do it. But before I go, because I just thought of something else, hold on, is here, if you still want to stay there and learn more education on what we teach, which is, is, is still beneficial to be making mm -hmm. life a lot easier for yourself in that size yeah. business. We're not saying everybody's got to have no. 20 or 30 staff. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is you've got to have the mindset that you don't have to stay here. Well, if you're going to be small, you've got to be expensive. And you've got to be as educated as the yeah. rest. You have, to be, you have to be able to make money at that stage. Yeah. And so... Um, have a think about it, because uh, I think you'll find it's, um, it, it's a lifesaver for men. You know, they feel so much better after they've uh, found out a few tips on how to turn their business around and make it a lot more stress-free. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you.